Hello, BSN One English. This is the best platform that I could think of in delivering my discussion since it could still be accessed in the future by your classmates with no internet connectivity. It really breaks my heart that you will not be able to participate because you're always participative in class. But for the meantime, let's just enjoy learning while we are under the community quarantine. So what we will be having today is the continuation of what we had discussed in our previous meeting. It's about the Philippine Gamaba Awards. Now, when we speak of Gamaba, it actually means Gawad sa Manlilikhang Bayan. Gamaba, Gawad sa Manlilikhang Bayan. It is actually an award that recognizes folk and indigenous artists who remain loyal to their traditions. This award is actually managed by National Commission for Culture and the Arts or NCCA through Gawad ng Bayan Committee. Gamaba Awards actually aims to support and motivate the artist to persevere or to preserve their artistic heritage for the present and future generation. So, basic, so basically, Gamaba inspires the artist to become good or to become excellent in their craft because maybe later on, in the future, of course, they could be awarded with a prestige. Before being an awardee, the candidate must have or must meet the following qualifications. First one, must be an occupant of an indigenous or traditional cultural community anywhere in the Philippines that has preserved native customs, beliefs, rituals, and traditions, and has syncretized whatever external elements that have influenced it. Meaning, the candidate must be a member of an indigenous or traditional community. Aside from that, the member must have united the customs, beliefs, traditions, and rituals of that certain community in spite of the external factors or external elements that had influenced their community. Second, must have involved in a folk art tradition that has been in existence and documented for at least 50 years. Meaning, he should have been a part, uh, participant or an active participant in a certain folk art or tradition that has already existed for at least 50 years. Next one. Must have consistently performed or produced over a significant period works of superior and distinctive quality. Meaning, the artwork or the performance must be superior and of distinctive quality, meaning it is actually excellent. Fourth one, must acquire a mastery of tools and materials needed by the art and must have an established reputation in the art as master and maker of works of extraordinary quality. What do we have to remember? The candidate must be a master and a maker of that certain artwork or that certain craft. And of course, the last one, must pass on and will pass on to other members of the community their talents in the folk art for which their group is traditionally known, meaning there should be transmission from one generation to another. Why is it important? Because in order or well, transmission is important so that that certain artwork, that certain tradition, that certain belief, that certain custom would not be extinct or would still be practiced in present time. Now let us move on to the Gamaba awardees and nominees. In this part, we will be meeting a lot of national artists or Filipino artists. The first one is Ginao Bilog. Ginao Bilog is a native of Oriental Mindoro who faithfully helps preserve the Hanunoo Mangyan script and their Ambahan poetry. When we speak of Hanunoo Mangyan script, it is actually a relative or it is related to Baybayin. It's their form of writing. Next one, we have Masino Intaray. Masino Intaray is a native of Palawan who exemplarily shared his skills in basal or gong music ensemble. He is a musician and epic chanter of Kulilal and Bagit. We also Next. have Samaon Sulaiman. Samaon Sulaiman is a Maguindanao of Mama Sapano, who showed outstanding artistry and dedication to his chosen instrument, the Maguindanao Kudyapi, 
And when we speak of kudyabi, of course, based on our previous discussion, it is a stringed instrument. That's why it belongs to the category of chordophones. We also have langdulai. When we speak of langdulai, she is actually a tibuli of Lake Cebu, South Cotabato. She was known for her skills in weaving the abaca ikat cloth known as the tinalak, woven from abaca fibers. Tinalak, it's woven from abaca fibers. And tinalak is also associated with the artist Lang Dulay. Next one, we also have Salinta Monon. Salinta Monon is a tagbawa bagobo of Bansalan for fully demonstrating her creative and expressive aspects of the bagobo abaca ikat weaving called inabal. Inabal is also um, abaca ikat weaving. Now, how are we going to compare monon and dulay? Lang dulay actually weaved tinalak and salinta monon had weaved inabal. Next one, we also have Alonzo Saklag. Alonzo Saklag is a Kalinga of Lubwagan for his mastery of the Kalinga dance and performing arts. Next one, we also have Federico Caballero. Federico Caballero is a Panay Bukidnon of Kalinog Iloilo for his mastery of chanting the epic tradition of Central Panay, the Sugidanon. When we speak of Sugidanon, it is actually a collection of epics here in Panay. And of course, when we speak of epic, it is a short story that is actually depicting or the characters possess supernatural powers. And of course, let's also not forget about Wang Od. I know that you're familiar with Wang Od, a traditional tattoo artist or she is actually called as the Mambabatok of Buscalan Tinglayan Kalinga. Now let us move on to other famous Filipino artists. We have here with us the first one, Ang Kyukok. Ang Kyukok is very famous with his artwork, The Crucifixion. As what we could see on this side of the video, this is the picture of the crucifixion. It is actually somehow... Uh, uh, it's composed of geometric shapes wherein collectively they form Jesus Christ on the cross or being crucified on the cross. Next one is Giusdado Lorenzo. Giusdado Lorenzo is very famous with still life paintings. Again, Giusdado Lorenzo is very famous with his still life paintings. When we speak of still life, it is actually an inanimate subject matter typically commonplace objects which are either natural or man-made. Now, these are the examples of the still life paintings of Justado Lorenzo. Next one, the very famous Fernando Cueto Amorsolo. He is a national artist for painting and he is very famous for his portraits. We actually have an example here. This is actually the portrait of Manuel Quezon. Next one, we have Hernando Ocampo. He is a national artist for visual arts, and he became famous because of his painting, The Contrast. Now, that is the example of The Contrast. What is in the artwork? It is actually feeling of heaviness and pain of a slum dweller against the background of a building that looks abandoned. Next one, we have Juan Luna. Juan Lula, of course, is very popular because he was the one who painted the Spoliario. Next one, we have Napoleon Abueva. He is a national artist for sculpture. Now, this is the famous artwork of Napoleon Abueva, which is called Allegorical Harpoon. Next one, we also have Solomon Saprit. I wasn't able to find or to look for the picture of Solomon Saprit. So I have here his famous artwork, which is called as the Tikbalang. And of course, we also have here with us Victorio Edades. He is a national artist for painting. Victorio Edades became famous because of his artwork. And of course, this is the famous artwork of 
Victoria Edades, which is entitled The Builders, or in Filipino term, Mga Mangagawa. So that ends our discussion for today, and I hope that you will still continue staying at home and be safe. Goodbye, everyone!